body. So this is a little unusual. So we do have to remember to be patient and kind with um, everybody. So today we have in attendance, Lindsay, Sonia, and myself from the community board and Steffi Mackey, who's our councillor appointed to the board. We have Ella, and who's the community development manager. Um, Liam Degg, Group Manager of Environmental Services, Becky Walland, Policy and Governance Manager, Darlene Christie, Governance and Support Team Leader, Marianne Archibald, Corporate Services Group Manager, Phil, Phil Nixon Mayor, Vanessa Bowles, Support Services Officer, and I, is that everybody? I haven't missed anyone. No, okay. Okay. Um, so please remember to um, say your name, your first and last name before moving and seconding. And yeah, so we'll move on to the agenda. Uh, we are missing Alan Hawkes today. Um, we'll put him in as an apology at this point, I think, because he has tried to get in touch with us, but um, technology isn't always our friend. So <laughs> if he turns up, that'll be good. Um, so would someone like to move the apology? Uh, Steffi Mackey, I'll move that, Karen. Thank you. And a second, sir? Yeah, I'll second that. Thank you. Um, so uh, all in favour, please say aye. Aye. Um, <laughs> I've got one. Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. And against? And carried, thank you. Right, so we will move on to open forum. So we have Becky Walland, the Policy and Governance Manager, speaking about the representation review. Would you, you could take it away, Becky? Morena, everyone. Thank you for uh, letting me take up some of your time this morning. I'm just going to share my screen. So can everyone see that, the presentation? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, uh, and I see Gordon Campbell has uh, arrived and he is in the meeting with us now. So if we have any curly questions in regards to boundaries and things, he's my man. Um, so we'll just, as you may be aware, the council adopted the initial proposal uh, for formal consultation uh, uh, last week or the week before, sorry. Uh, so this is just an update uh, that I'm giving to all the boards uh, just about where we're at with the process and the next steps. So the uh, initial proposal that was adopted included 13 councillors plus the mayor. Uh, so that will give us 11 general ward councillors, two Māori ward councillors, uh, which is an additional councillor compared to the current representation that we have at the moment. So that is uh, how it will look for council uh, in terms of the consultation. So consultation runs until the 23rd of September. So Māori wards, it was agreed that we would have two Māori wards with one councillor per ward. Uh, we need suggestions for names for the east and west wards uh, and the names have to be adopted as part of the final decision which is scheduled to be made on the 11th of October. The boundary Four Māori wards is predominantly along State Highway 3 and I'm not sure that map is unfortunately a little bit small to see uh, but it does split Eltham in half and it does split Hawara in half. Uh, so we went back and forth from Iwi and this is what Iwi have asked for and what Iwi have agreed to. So for the councillors, uh, there'll be 11 councillors elected from four wards. So that would give Eltham Kaponga two councillors, Patea two councillors, Taranaki Coastal two, and Te Hawara five. Feel free to jump in if you have any questions or if I'm going too fast, or uh, but we'll have some time for questions and answers at the end. So that's basically how it is going to look. Uh, there, that's part of the consultation information that we're sending out at the moment. 
And we've included the community boards on that map as well, just so that people have a clear idea about how many elected members there will be in total for each of the wards. So for example, um, we've put there so that there's the community boards and the two councillors. So the community boards, there was uh, from the pre-consultation that we undertook and from the councillors and the mayor's perspective, uh, there was definite support to retain the community boards, uh, which will follow the same ward boundaries as those proposed for the general wards. As I said a little earlier, consultation runs until the 23rd of September. Uh, the hearing for submissions that we receive uh, will be held on the 29th of September, and the deliberations and final decision will be made on the 11th of October. Following that, there will be an objection period where people can actually still object to the decision that the council makes. Once that month objection period has been, uh, we've been through that, if we receive no objections, the proposal, it is highly likely that the proposal will go to the Local Government Commission. And the reason for that is that at the moment, the, uh, the proposal that we're putting forward is uncompliant. So in other words, it doesn't comply with some of the thresholds that the Local Electoral Act tell us, tells us that we have to um, adhere to. And that's, the council were happy with that based on the decision that it's about representation for each of the, for the, each of the wards. And it was based on the feedback that we received through the pre-consultation process. So my little plug <laughs> is we really need everybody's feedback, uh, particularly from our community boards. Uh, we received uh, one submission through the informal process from the Te Hawara, uh, Community Board, but it's really important that the boards get out there and um, provide their feedback and let them know whether or not they support the Council's initial proposal, including the retention of the boards um, and the representation for each of their wards. Uh, there is a, a survey online and after this meeting I will send out the links to all of the information that's on our website. Uh, you can email us, you can, well, pre-lockdown you could have taken a hard copy to any of our libraries or Aquatic Centre or eyesight. can't do that at the moment, um, or you can phone us on 0800 number and we're happy to, um, we're happy to complete forms for people. Uh, Gordon and I are here to support. So yeah, it's really good if uh, the boards can all put their feedback in, either in favour um, of the council's decision. So is there any questions? So Phil Nixon, <coughs> through you Chair. Becky, have we had many submissions so far? Uh, for the formal process, we've, I think when I counted the other day, we've received seven. There are several things that we're looking to do this time and uh, Gordon and I are planning on doing that um, over the next couple of days. So one of the things that we're going to do is because some of the boundaries have changed along uh, by Oweo or, or Road. So there's some, um, so it's, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually consult directly with those people on the boundary. We're gonna send them an email or send them a, um, a pack of some information and just say, hey, look, the, this is the boundary proposed um, for the changes. And we really want those people's uh, feedback. And we're also going to be sending out some information to our ratepayer database um, as well. So hopefully we'll get a bit more feedback that way. Thank you, um, Becky. I think that sounds really good, um, especially out around Oil Road. Um, Becky, just a question, Karen Cave. Um, so that um, email that you'll send out to us with the link to the survey, is that something we can share out? Oh, absolutely. Yep, please do. Um, so yeah, send it to everyone. I'm also going to talk to comms and see if we can put some Facebook posts up this week. It's been in Southlink the last two weeks. Um, but yeah, so we're just hoping that some online uh, getting some information out there online might generate a bit more yeah, awareness. 
Yes, well, making it easy for people to access is really important as well. So having a link just to click on, go straight to it, makes yep. things straightforward. So that's awesome, thank you. So any further questions for Becky? No? Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. And I apologise for not turning my camera on, but my internet's not the best here. Sorry. No <laughs> Thank worries. You. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thanks, oh. Becky. All right, everyone. So we will move on to the confirmation of the minutes. Um, so we've got the minutes here. Now... There was something in there that you noted, Alan? Uh, not Alan, sorry, Lindsay. Yes, uh, just the part to do with the uh, field gun there, Vanessa, I think you're taking the notes. Uh, it says there that I um, commented that the uh, field gun was previously only just for touching or something like that. It actually wasn't me. Uh, I think it may have been Alan Hawke, so... Um, I wasn't very familiar with the field gun before that anyway, so I, it wasn't me that spoke that. So um, I think it may have been Alan from memory. He spoke about that, that it was only for touching. So if you'd like to just amend that. But, uh, thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have the recommendation that we adopt the minutes from the meeting held on the 12th of July. As a true and correct record, someone like to move that, please. Sonia Dowds, I'll move that. Do you second I'll second that, seeing I've made an amendment to it. <laughs> cool. Um, I'll put forward the motion that we receive that. All in favour, please say aye or state your name. Sonia. Lindsay. Steph A. There's nobody against. So we'll carry those. Thank you very much. Sorry, Chair. Um, just a comment on those, and I was um, getting a bit strained by technology. Um, under that same item that Lindsay's just mentioned, the field gun, it's talking about me commenting, but I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. So it may well have been Rob. Um, it is a comment that I have made in the past. Okay. Well, okay, uh, we'll sort that <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right, so we will move on. Um, we are now on to our local discretionary funding application. So we do have two applications here. Um, and our first one is um, from the Altham Community Development Group and their project is to install a PO, which has been organised by local iwi at the new entrance of Bridger Park. So I do have a conflict of interest as I am the secretary for this group. Um, um, Stephanie Steph Mackey, I also have a conflict of interest as I'm treasurer for this group. So as such, we um, are unable to vote now. <laughs> so it's on you. Um, okay, so sorry, we can Sonia. answer questions. So Sonia here, do I, I'm just unsure of conflict of interest because I do occasionally participate in that group. No, probably not such a worry, not being an office holder. Okay, so, just yeah. yep, double check. All right, so um, any comments about the um, funding application? Any questions? Or uh, I think it's great to have um, the iwi involved in that project. I'm really excited to see it happen. So it's, yeah, I've heard people saying photos and I'm really yeah excited to see it go ahead. Any further comments? I was, um, Lindsay, yeah, I uh, was quite surprised at the cost of it. There's a lot of timber. Are they making a, um, a platform or is it, how's it um, being done? I was just sort of thinking there must be a lot of timber and a lot of construction in there. Steffi, would you like to reply? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, they, uh, they've got to make sure it comes off the ground 
So there's some uh, construction of a concrete and then it's going into a rod or something. And I mean, I'm not a technical builder or anything, but there's a bit involved because I don't want it going into the ground so it um, doesn't um, succumb to rot. Yeah, so um, not knowing all the full details, but um, there was a, it was a little bit more complicated than just planting a pole as such, Lindsay. Yeah, well, I figured that with the, the cost of whereabouts are they going to put it? What part of the... Um, they're putting it in, like, of course, it's going in the entrance to the um, Bridger Park on our new development, and it's just going at the top end of the pavers, and it will be in um, sight line um, looking at, will follow through to see the town hall through it. Um, and seen right. by all angles, but um, that's the position that the local iwi have asked to where they'd like to put it. So they've been down on site and had it with David Bruce and I, and that's the position they've chosen that they would like it to go. So it would be quite visible for everybody. Right. So yeah, that's what I wondered because I, you know, us locals, we sort of the other end of the park. We all seem to go on the other end, but the 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 main entrance now will be. Um, um, down there past Mike's place, you know, where they're doing that new construction. Yes, this this was the whole idea nearly five yeah. years ago now, and it's great to see it nearly coming to completion. <laughs> <You're That's pretty. laughs> yeah, the paper, good, yeah. Yeah, no, that's all right. I just, uh, I just wondered because it was, you know, um, yeah, that, the, the cost of it and, and where what I thought it must be a lot more construction mm. involved. So, yeah, thanks, Debbie. Oh, yeah. right. So would somebody like to um, make a recommendation that we approve or decline or however you feel? Just through the chair, I'm, I'm just wondering if we have enough people to vote, given that we've got two conflicts of interest and an apology. Um, yes, Madam Chair, I was just thinking the same thing. We haven't, you know, we haven't got a majority quorum being able to vote. How do we manage this then? Could I just um, seek some clarification? Um, could I exercise my right to vote? I'm happy with that. I'm Darlena, Christy, uh, Vanessa, would you like to comment on what we can do? I haven't um, got a copy of the standing orders here. Has, have you, Darlena or Vanessa? Uh, Vanessa um, Bowles here. I'm just checking the standing orders, so um, that might be a moment. Thank you. Thank you. You are a member of all of the committees of council, so. Yeah, so I am an ex officio member of all um, council committees. But whether that comes to, and I'm sure that's boards as well. Does that give us enough, Liam? Uh, we'll probably uh, through the chair probably just wait on uh, Vanessa to um, just grab the standing orders but we, we may just have enough for a quorum but um, yeah we'll just see what Vanessa's got to say. Through you the chair it's Darlene Christie speaking here um, I just noted that the quorum is three but with the ex um, with the mayor being the ex official and being able to vote on that it can go ahead rather than lying on the table. Fantastic thank you so much Darlene. All right, so do we have any um, recommendations then? Uh, Sonia Dowds here, and I recommend that we approve the full amount. Okay, so um, any discussion or other recommendations? Can I just clarify the second, please? Um, haven't got one just yet. We'll just see. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. Second. <laughs> so I'll be happy to second okay. that. Thank you. <laughs> Any discussion? Are we all happy with that? I think it's um, like Steffi said, it's really great to see that this is finally coming to fruition. Um, and also, as was said, working with Iwi. Um, I think it's really great and, and I just look forward to seeing this all in place and happening. So that's why I'm happy to be um, in full support of it and second the motion. 
All right, thank you very much. Right, so if everyone's happy, we will put forward the motion that we approve the funding for the um, development group. So all in favour, please state your name. Sonia Dowd. Bill Nixon. Lindsay Maindonald. Thank you, so nobody to vote against, so we'll carry it. Thank you. So the next one we have on our agenda is um, from ourselves to provide a doggy do bag dispenser for the Smythe Park in Kaaponga. So um, I can speak to that. The total project cost is $505. Um, council will get uh, doggy do bags from this company for a few other sites so it makes sense to go with the same company to um, to get this from them. Um, so um, would somebody like to make a recommendation or any discussion prior to the recommendation? No, I think it'd be great for our community to have that um, visible, that the Smart Park is a visible area for the dog park um, and obviously the capacity to clean up after themselves. Because yeah. <laughs> All right, any further comment? No? Okay, so would somebody like to make a recommendation? Uh, Sonia Dowds, I recommend that we approve the full amount. Thank you, Sonia. Someone to second that? Steffi Mackey, I'll second that. Thank you, Steffi. Um, so but I will put forward the motion that we um, give this funding for this project. So all in favour, please state your name. Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> Steffi Mackey. Lindsay Maindonald. Sonia Dowds. Did you want to, um, you sort of missed the boat there, Alan, but we've just been talking about the funding, so for the doggy do bags, for the smart part. So we, is anyone against? Any abstinations? In, yeah, been carried. All right, thank you. I would like to comment that I do like the new um, re report for the um, funding applications. Right, funding. Sorry, just flicking through my agenda trying to find the next page. All right, so next on our agenda, we have a report. Um, I guess the draft property acquisitions and disposal policy. So, where our recommendation is that um, we provide feedback to the council on the draft property. And acquisition and disposal disposal policy. Sorry. <laughs> so, do we have a mover, please? Uh, Steffi Mackey, I'll move that. Thank you. And a seconder. Sonia Dowds, I'll second that. Thank you. Do we have any discussion? Now we do have um, Mary Ann here to help comment, or if you've got any questions on the report. Or the policy, sorry. Um, uh, Steffi Mackey here. Marianne, just on the um, like reserve land in there, and it says you'll follow like all the legislations, but um, I just and it's probably covered. Um, when when we've got some land um, with if it's reserve land or crown land, um. To, is that meant to be offered to e we have first right of purchase sort of like under like how the schools work um <clears throat> i don't think so but i can check that i can check that um i know that we can't um 
if we if we decide we don't want a reserve, we can we can sometimes um, apply to have reserve status swapped to another piece of land that is more appropriate for a reserve. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, we just lose it, and so we can't we can't sell reserves. So that like if we decide we don't want a reserve, it goes back to the crown. I don't know if they offer it to Ewe then or not. Okay, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sorry, a question. Um, so if a reserve goes back to Crown, will they then maintain it or do we end up with a piece of land that would be unmaintained? <clears throat> I assume they would maintain it. I don't think that we um, usually... Um, I don't think we would usually give a reserve back. What, um, yeah, we would tend to find another piece that's more appropriate and ask for the status to be swapped. So that land becomes the new land becomes the reserve land, <clears throat> and then we can, um, you know, dispose of the other land or do something else with the other land. That would be the a good plan usually, <laughs> but I don't think we, we uh, yeah, we wouldn't do that very often. I shouldn't think. Any further questions? I know, but I was quite pleased to, um, when Karen was talking about the other day to see that um, going forward that when pieces of land become not used that they will be addressed then and there. Mm -hmm. I think that's um, a really positive step for the council to be taking. Yeah. Um, yeah, we want to do that and make sure we get it tidied up at the time if we can rather than have um, endless little odd bits of land here and there to, that nobody knows what they're for and yeah so I, th I think yeah uh, um, the property team are also um, identifying um, land that could be surplus you know doesn't seem to have a known use and there's certainly I know the property team Karen probably told you that they get constant calls about little bits of land here and there that really don't make sense for us to own or maintain as mm. the council and you know other people could put to good use so it's good to finally, and I think possibly it even came from this. Well, when I first came mm. to my first community board, I think it was the Eltham community board that asked for this. Yes. Um, you know, the information on, on land and stuff. So we're pleased to have um, put something around that. It, yeah, it started with um, when Gordon, back when he was on, it, it was quite a few years ago now. <laughs> but um, we've been following it along. So it is actually really good to see that something's come to fruition and to see, yeah, the, the result is um, here for us. Because um, that was one thing that we noted that there are a lot of little bits of land, like when a road's been moved and there's a strip mm. of land that council owns and then the farmer may move a fence over and then you know, that land is sort of being used and kept tidy. But still owned by council so there's mm. lots of bits and pieces and yeah so it's good that it's all been identified as well now um, and yeah. sorry oh. well, Lindsay you was Lindsay. it so Sonia next yeah, yeah. okay oh. Lindsay then Sonia I think it's a good idea because uh just in the last year there's been various council I know Wellington had a problem uh, building that was just over there, a little bit of land there, and I know Auckland's had a problem with a reserve up there that that's still ongoing, so um, some of these little pieces of land, especially the Wellington, was very insignificant, but it caused quite a big problem, so I think it's actually quite good that it's being addressed here. I know the Wellington one, is uh, what you are talking about, Marianne, was a swapping of a piece of land, and, that, and I know there's quite a bit of conjecture over that one at the, I think it's ongoing at the moment, so it's quite good that uh, this is resolved now before something does come up because um, these ones go back a long, long time as well and they've just been brought to the council's attention. And that's two I know of in the last recent while. So, no, good move. Thank you, Lindsay. Sonia, would you like to comment? Uh, yeah, I was just going to add that I was really pleased to see that the community boards would be involved in the process so we can go back to the communities and just sort of ask or question or check whether those bits of lands have use or have people have been thinking about they could be used for other things and things like that. So just as part of the process that 
it's coming through us before its you know, final decisions are made. So thank you for that. All right. So any further comment from anyone? So we've moved and seconded, have we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah. so I'll yeah. put, put forward the motion that we'll um, receive. So all in favour, please state your name. Lindsay, Maine Donald. Sonia Dowd. Alan Hawkes. Steffi Mackey. So that's everybody. So there's no against. So we will carry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mary Ann. Thank Gordon. you. I might leave you to it now. Thank Have you. Have a nice meeting. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Right, so next on our agenda, we have items for action. So does anyone have any comment on any of the updates? Any questions? Uh, Steffi Mackey here. Um, just with the local security cameras, unfortunately, because of COVID, we've um, been unable to attend um, a celebration of them being operational, which was going to happen last Wednesday. But that will happen in the future again. But yeah, it's good to see they are up and running and um, and just put that extra security and safety for our community, especially under COVID times when the rat bags usually come out because, you know, got nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Sonia Dowd's here. So yeah, we had an incident um, at the car on the four square a couple of nights ago where uh, there was an attempted break-in and if we'd had the security cam, they have security cameras but inside their building. So if we'd had the security cameras on the outside, that would have been helpful for following that up. So looking forward to getting that through. Um, I just need to follow up and with Di with the lines because they were approached um, and seemed quite positive initially about putting forward the application for the um, Kaponga cameras. So we just need to, to follow that up. Thank you. Um, I just see the property review is on the items for action. Do we feel that we can probably take this off now that we've actually got a, um, the word's gone. <laughs> we've got, you know, a, a result. So can we take this off? Is everyone happy for that to be removed? Yep. Alan, we've got, yep. Yeah, okay. no, it can be removed. Thank you. Finally, after 2014, eight years. <laughs> <laughs> it's done now. It's all good. Okay, any further comments? And we can move on. We're all happy. Oh, I'll just add, it'd be lovely to see the uh, Kaiponga solar heating system join that list at some stage soon. <laughs> on that note, um, I actually thought that was in the Kaponga pool upgrade in the long term plan. Is that not it in there? Like Eltham and Rawit had their solars done. Um, there's a small solar system for the little pool, but I'm not sure it's actually really ever been effective. But we've actually put forward a application to the Community Initiative Fund for solar heating for the main pool. So that's a sort of hundred thousand dollar project. No, well, that's why I thought with all the pool upgrades that were happening in consecutive years that Carpongas was in that. Maybe I missed that, and it's not. Does Liam have anything else? Uh, I guess yeah, just through the chair, uh, probably two things. Um, I guess the the community initiatives funds deliberation is sort of underway and. Uh, Mayor Phil might want to comment on that. Uh, but secondly, yeah, the, the LTP, I'm just racking my brain on uh, where we got to with LTP deliberations. We might have to take that um, sort of question on notice in terms of what's in or out uh, for the Kaponga pool. Um, uh, so, yeah, we can come back to you on that one. But uh, in terms of the community fund, I think we're a week away from deliberations, Mayor Phil. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just checking my calendar. Um, 
Liam, when that is. Um, yep, so that is uh, Monday the 30th um, that we're looking at those. And so, yeah, well, there won't be any decisions until then. Uh, I'm a bit like Liam when it comes to the uh, long-term plan. I'm not sure whether that was in that or not. Um, I'm thinking not, but um, we, we can certainly take it on notice and follow up. Lindsay here. Um, would it be a uh, would it be a problem if it was in the long term plan, and the fact that it's actually been put forward now at a meeting the other day, or would actually the, the proposal that was put forward the other day, yeah, would that go ahead, or would it have to wait for the long term plan if, if what Alan's saying is correct that it is in the long term plan? Would the presentation that Sonia put forward, the other community put forward the other day, would that have to be put on hold if it was found to be in a long-term plan? Look, we'll just have to get some clarification on that. Um, as I say, I don't think it is in the long-term plan because there certainly was discussion on it at the community consultation meetings in Kaponga, the one at the town hall and the one in the library, and I'm fairly sure it's not in there, but we absolutely need to confirm that. And um, but yes, the application is in um, to the Community Initiatives Fund, and um, that will just take part of the process. Good. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your comments there. And if there's no further comment, we will move forward on to the Community Development Activity Report. Um, and I'll put forward the recommendation that we receive this activity report. Um, would someone? Like, like to move that. Some your doubts. And a seconder. Lindsay. Thank you. And is there any discussion, any comments, any questions about anything in this, within this report? Um, Steffi Mackey here. Um, just a comment, Ella. I don't know if they can do it during our lockdown level four, but the weather's fine to get the painting done in the <laughs> I know. It's got to be above 12. Uh, am I on? Yep. It's got to be it's above 12 degrees. And one of the issues about the paving, particularly the wayfinding, is that the pavers don't warm up. So it's not necessarily that the air is not warm enough, it's that the pavers don't get warm. Uh -huh. And so I did ask if there was a way that we could heat the pavers, maybe, you know, with a gas blower or torch flamethrower or something. Um, but it doesn't keep the pavers at the consistent temperature that the paint needs to set and dry. So it's not just about the paint drying either, it's about it setting. So you'll notice that the red, they tried to do that, it was 11 degrees when they applied that and it hasn't really worked that well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the paint's the issue at the moment. Okay. Yeah, the temperature, I mean, yeah. Mm. It's a little bit like watching paint dry, isn't it? Well, <laughs> or watching no paint dry, really. <laughs> We look forward to some warmer days so that can go ahead most definitely. <laughs> any further comments on any of um, parts of that report? I will we'll put forward the motion that we receive that. All in favour, please state your name. On your dads. Lindsay Main Donald. Alan Hawkes. So that's everybody um, against abstinations and we'll carry that. Thank you. Thank you. So next on our agenda we have the District Library Plus report for July 2021. I'll put forward the recommendation that we receive this report. Um, somebody like to move please. Lindsay. A seconder. Sunny Downs. Any discussion? I would like to actually start the discussion. I was reading the part about the Open Aki Library Plus running the month of unprogramming. unprogramming. I thought that was such a neat idea to um, gather people into the library and with a different way of looking at things. I thought that was really clever. Anyone else? With a comment or a question. Just while we're on Lindsay here, 
just while we're on the library, I don't know whether this is the appropriate place or not, but um, I've mentioned it before, but the uh, the white uh, stuff that's in the, uh, the the line at the front, and I know they're having problems with other parks and I think even the new board thing, it looks absolutely shocking uh, for our centre of town building. Uh, it's all just all over the footpath. It's just looked so untidy. All that line's just, it's just not holding in there. So I just think, I saw it the other day and I thought, well, this is our hub of our town. I have mentioned it before, but uh, it just, that lime stuff doesn't seem to hold in whether they have it on walks or whatever. And it looks shocking. So it's just a comment I make that, that our library is always usually a nicely spruced up focal point, but it doesn't look like it on the footpath if you go up and have a look. Mm. It's around that tree there, and it's just it's spreading right across everywhere. It's terrible. I think that's the same problem with other places. It's meant to be the go and end all thing, but it's not working. Thank you, Lindsay. Any further comment on the report? No? Sonia Dowd's here. I was just, um, I noticed the circulation for the um, month of July was down, and I'm wondering if that was because we've had such wonderful weather. <laughs> You know, people are outside and not going to the library and getting books and reading. Um, but also that uh, in terms of circulation, there were you know 13,000 issues and there's 13,000 um, members of the library. So that's an average of one uh, per person who's a member. So that's a pretty good result for a community, I would have thought. And I'm betting with um, lockdown that their online issues will be going back up. <laughs> it's very handy. Yeah, that's um, a fantastic service. That is. Right, any further comment? No? Okay, so I'll put forward the motion that we receive this report. All in favour, please say aye, or say your name, sorry. On your dads. Lindsay McDonald. Alan Hawkes. Steffi Mackey. Against. Abstentions carried. Thank you very much. Okay, so our next report is the Environmental Services Activity Report for June 2021. Um, note that there are two of these reports, one is for June and one, one for July. So, Okay, so the recommendation that we receive this report, um, I'll move that. Would someone like to second it, please? Alan Hawkes will second it. Thank you. Um, any discussion or questions or comment, Liam? Uh, through the chair, happy to make just a, a couple of very quick comments. Um, I guess the, the reason for the two reports is um, because we're at the end of the financial year, so we've we've just done one for uh, June and then we've started our statistics off uh, for July. So um, that's yeah, the, the main reason for for, for two reports across items 6.3 and 6.4. Um, we're probably, two, two main comments, uh, we're probably seeing a slight drop in, in building consents, which isn't that surprising. It sort of happens uh, during winter. Uh, but we are still seeing, um, uh, you know, four to five houses on average across the, across the two months. Um, it's down a little bit from the, you know, seven or eight we were seeing a couple of months ago, but um, it's still a reasonably high volume, you know, particularly compared to, uh, last year. Um, so that's giving the, the team a little bit of time to uh, just catch up and regroup. Um, probably the, the, the main concern across the two reporting uh, periods is just uh, animal control and um, the, the, there seems to be a, an upward pattern uh, on two of our key indicators, dog attacks and um, sort of rushing threatening, uh, the two main ones. Um, just before we were going into lockdown, we we're going to have a bit of a uh, a summit with the regulatory team just to uh, see what we could change, resource up, do things like that. Uh, that was supposed to be uh, Wednesday last week, so that meeting hasn't happened yet. Uh, it's probably a meeting that you know, is best had sort of face to face, uh, but it's certainly just signalling that we're um, we're yeah, mindful of the of the stats um, and what we can do uh, uh, further uh, to to address that. The, those increases. So that's a, a bit of a work in progress for me. Um, other than that, happy to take any comments. 
uh, Sonia Dowds here. I'm not sure it fits in here, but um, I'm looking at the customer service requests. Um, and I think this must be mainly for what comes under the regulatory services, but because um, it sort of made me think, oh, there's no numbers there for um, road repairs or potholes. And, um, you know, I've rung a few in and I thought that was, a, you know, that might be an interesting thing because a lot of people um, talk about the quality of our roads, but also wanted to comment that when I've rung them in and I've driven over that road the next day, those potholes have been resolved. So thank you for that. Can I, Lindsay here, can I just make a comment? I'm not sure that it's a, there either, but um, Phil and the Mayor will remember this. We had our, um, the manhole cover in the middle of town was, was apparently fixed up. Well, uh, it hasn't lasted very long and you can hear it every time the uh, vehicles go over again, Phil. That was that one that you got straight onto, uh, right in the middle of the intersection there. So I'm just a bit concerned that it may... Uh, fly off or something because it uh, guy has gone back to the old uh, rattle bang every time a vehicle or truck goes over it. So uh, it was very quickly repaired the last time, Phil, but it hasn't lasted long. So may pay to look at it because um, if it came off, it would be a danger, I would think. Yeah, thanks, Lindsay. Through you, Chair. Um, so have you um, got in touch with NZTA on that? Because that is their road. Um, or or you could ring council with a with a CRM for it because that's the process to to do with these things and then something will happen. Right, no, I just noticed it the other day. So everything's been blocked down, of course. But, um, yeah, yeah. Um, you, yep, must have, so. you must have initiated something last time, did you, Phil? Did, uh, you uh, yeah, well, there was already stuff in train last time with that one as well. And and so the best thing to do is to, to lodge a customer request, put in a CRM so you could ring council, they will put it through to NZTA or ring their 0800 number um, and lodge that with them. And then um, always those things, when you see them, just pick up the phone. You can do that today. That's not a problem. That will still happen under lockdown. They may not come out and fix it, but it certainly will get lodged and prioritised. Yeah, I, I will do that because it's probably something we'd need me to make note of in case something did happen with it. Um, apparently, last time, I think there was uh, motorbikes were getting it and, and coming off. To, I was commenting on. So, no, when the meeting's finished, I will actually ring up and, and uh, lodge because I think that needs to be... Uh, pretty acted on pretty quickly. I think it's a metal cover, so um, especially with the big vehicles uh, there. So no, I'll do that. Good comment. OK, thank you. Does, is there any further um, comment on the June report? And if not, then I'll put forward the motion that we receive. All in favour, please state your name. Sonia Dowds. Lindsay Main Donald. Steffi Mackey. Alan Hawkes. Thank you. Against abstentions and carried. All right. So the next one we've got is the Environmental Services Activity Report for July. So I uh, will make the recommendation that we receive this activity report. Um, would someone like to move that? Sunny Dowds. And a seconder. Lindsay Main Donald. Any discussion on Liam's report? And through the chair, just happy to um, happy to take it as read. Um, my earlier comments sort of applied across the two reports. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Just looking at the photos. <laughs> oh, right. So no further discussion? And I'll put forward the motion that we receive this. All in favour, please state your name. Sunny Dowds. Lindsay Main Donald. Alan Hawkes. Steffi Mackey. Against. Abstentions. And carried. Thank you. The, oh, the next one we have on the report. 
on the list is the facility usage report. So I will put forward the recommendation that we receive this report. Would someone like to move this, please? I will, Lindsay Maynard. And a seconder. Alan Hawkes. Thank you. Any discussion, comment? Uh, Steffi Mackey here. Um, Liam, I was just wondering how we're getting on with um, our forever friend at 130 Bridge Street, as he's not complied with the notices you've given. <laughs> uh, just through the uh, through the chair, my forever friend. Uh, yes, so uh, the compliance officer's uh, working on that at the moment. You won't see anything uh, sort of... Um, physically uh, sort of changed there for a little bit. We're just getting our paperwork sorted. Uh, but yeah, there's a, um, I, I have a few forever friends, Steffi. <laughs> um, he's one of them. So now we are working on it in the background. Thank you, Liam. <laughs> Any further comment on this report, the information report? And I'll take that as a no. So I'll put forward the motion. We receive the report. All in favour, please state your name. Any doubts? Steffi Mackey. Lindsay Main Donald. Ellen Hawkes. Against. Abstentions. Then carried. And that's the end of the agenda. So I will. Karen. Yes. Karen, just before we go, I'm going to try and break things. I'd love to take you for a little walk. You know this is recorded, right, Alan? Yeah, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see that? Um, down a bit. Nice. Well, I think that one needs to cancel one. Down Thank a bit. Thank you, guys. Thank you for that. No worries, Alan. Yep. We would like to pass on our condolences for you for from all of us. We were going to do it at the beginning of the meeting, but you were late. <laughs> well, blame the computer. It worked this morning and then it didn't want to work. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Alan. All right. Thanks, so, Thanks um, Alan. Yeah. I will close the meeting at 11.23. <laughs>